God, those bees were bad. Oh, just like they always are. But today's gonna be a little bit different, you guys. We're gonna do our very first educational session live from the hive. Killer beehive, that is. That's right. Now, you guys have seen us on YouTube. You've seen us endlessly out there in action, going to war, doing battle with these monsters. Well, we're gonna go behind the scenes here. We get a lot of questions from you guys, and we're gonna do a question and answer session. So, I want you guys to sit back, get some popcorn, just prepare to be amazed, because we're gonna go into a lot of things in a lot of detail today. This is our first educational session. So let's get to it. I'm here with my good friend, Rob Page, at his restaurant, The Table, here in Old Bisbee, in southeastern Cochise County, southeastern Arizona. Rob, tell me a little bit about your restaurant. Thanks, Reed. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're a family-owned restaurant in downtown Bisbee. We've been here since 2001. Yeah, I remember when you opened. Um, it's been a long time. Uh, we initially started as a grill, and now we're the table. Uh, we're excited to uh, be teaming up with you in a, in a, in a culinary way. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be adding killer bee honey yes. to our new charcuterie board. Which will have uh, your honey and your mustards. And the mustards. Right. So we're calling it Killer Bee Charcuterie. Oh, of course they are. Of course <laughs> we are. This is where I eat in town, you guys. So come on down to Bisbee, visit. I'd like to thank Rob for this venue. This is a great spot for our venue for our QA. This is our first, not our last. All right. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Reed. All right. It. Hi, guys. Well, today we're going to talk about a few things the history of these bees. Where did they come from? All right. I normally tell people just south of hell because that's how mean they are, all right? Now, they actually came from a science experiment gone wrong. In 1957, at the request of the Brazilian government, a Dr. Warwick Kerr went to South Africa to procure pure African queen bees for experiments in crossbreeding between European bees and pure African bees to make African eyes bees. Why in the heck would anybody do that? because it was well known that African bees were very productive, up to twice as much honey, all right? And also tough as nails, disease resistant. European bees sickly, especially in jungle conditions, and poor producers of honey, all right? Before Africanization, Brazil was an insignificant producer of honey. Now they're fifth worldwide, all right? So they, they, he was very responsible. Uh, scientists. They had them in an enclosed area. The Africanization was taking place. They were crossbreeding. And to keep the Africanized queens from swarming, we'll go into that a little bit later, there's a trick where we put a screen on the entrance to the hive so that the queen can't get out. She's bigger than the worker bees. The worker bees can still go through. It's a little hard though. So he, this doctor, went to a conference in Sao Paulo and a new guy apparently didn't read the manual. And he saw all those screens on the entrance to the hive and thought, oh, those bees are having trouble getting in and out of there. And he pulled the screens off, and I have a job. And that's pretty much what happened. They escaped. They spread out from Brazil at about 300 miles a year in every direction. Well, south and west of Brazil isn't much to do. But going north, well, they came into Texas in 1991. They came into Arizona in 1993 and into New Hampshire. Whoa, did I just say New Hampshire? Yeah, New Hampshire. They came into New Hampshire last year, 2018. There was a stinging incident. How do I know that? HLN called me up. I'm the go-to guy, right? Headline News called me up, and they said, uh, yeah, we're going to do a live interview with you tomorrow, uh, 1030, three-minute interview. And I said, okay, why? And they said, well, we had a stinging incident in New Hampshire. Manchester, New Hampshire. So yeah, they're all over the United States. Maybe not the saturation level that we have here in Arizona. It's 100% here, but it will be. So these Africanized bees, what's the difference between them and a European bee? All right, they look the same. To the naked eye, you cannot tell the difference. They are a honeybee, all right? But they do every job that a European bee does times 10, all right? They make twice as much honey they actually pollinate better. They swarm more often, all right? What is swarming? Swarming is nature's way of propagating the area with bees. So you've got a hive, all right? To a few times a year, the old queen, she's already been on a mating flight, remember that, 
the old queen will take 10 to 20 percent of the, those bees, take off and go find a new place to live. You still have your hive, all right? And this is also how your nice European hive can become Africanized like that. All right, so they take off and go find a new place to live. You still have your old hive. European hives left to themselves would do that five or six times a year. Africanized up to 30 per hive. And so she told two friends and she told two friends and they spread out very rapidly, all right? Now, when a this is how your nice European hive can become Africanized very quickly. The old queen takes those bees, those 10 or 20%, and go find a new place to live. There is a new queen in that old hive, all right? She has not been on a mating flight. There is never any mating in the hive, no hanky-panky in the hive, all right? She has to go on a mating flight, and she emits a pheromone, and drone bees, male bees, will smell that pheromone from a mile or more away, and they will fly and catch up with her and mate with her in mid-air. It's not a pretty picture, all right? When the drone bee mates with the queen bee, he literally explodes and dies, all right? She will mate with two or three dozen of these guys in a few hours. She'll go back to the hive with all of these Africanized male sperm inside of her and start laying crossbred Africanized babies in your nice hive, your European hive. It takes about three weeks for these babies to start hatching. So in a month, all of a sudden, your, your bees are meaner than hell, and you have an Africanized hive. It is, she, from that one mating flight, she will lay 1,500 or more eggs every day for up to five years. Yeah, this is science fiction. So they, they swarm more often, and our problem, of course, is that the Africanized bee defends the hive better also. All right, to the nth degree. Well, we know that. You know that from watching our vids on YouTube. And soon, now, on Roku, all right, we have our own channel on Roku, a good buddy of mine out in Texas, Mike Sexton. He has 911 honeybee removal. He, we teamed up with him, and we have the Hive Masters on Roku. All right, and a colleague of ours, JP the Bee Man, we're, he's on there also. So you can go to Roku now and watch our channel the hive masters along with all of our stuff on YouTube. You've seen how mean these bees are. They ch chased our truck for two miles. They will not give up. They, in 1998, we had the worst stinging incident in the world to this day here in Bisbee, Arizona. Yes, of course I was here. These bees, they stung 17 people, eight people in the hospital. By the time I got there, the police department was in the hospital. No, I mean in the hospital. These bees, there was so much pheromone in the air. These bees were stinging telephone poles, tires on cop cars and ambulances, birds flying overhead. They stayed mad for two weeks. That's how these bees are. Now, we love the bees, all right? We love our European honeybees. These Africanized bees are different, all right? They are way too mean to deal with. The main advice that I have for you at home is don't try this at home. Please, if you have a wild beehive, especially in the southern part of the states, have a professional come out and do it. In southern Arizona alone last summer, they killed eight humans. On average, in Cochise County, just our county, in an average year, they kill a dog, a horse, or a goat every week. All right? So don't try this at home. We're dealing with a different thing here than the European bees. We miss our European bees. Also, what are the laws regarding this? In the state of Arizona, the Arizona Revised Statute 36-601 states about feral hives. It is unlawful. If you have a wild, a feral hive on your property, and they don't specify known or unknown, you legally have to have it removed. The reason being, these things are so dangerous that if someone walking by on the street or a kid throws a rock or anything happens like that, if a neighbor gets stung or the neighbor's horse gets killed, you are liable. All right, so you need to be careful about them. The honeymoon's over, and I'd like to take this chance now to go to our Q&A. We're gonna do a little question and answer, and uh, let's get to that. Okay, guys out there at the World Wide Hive, we have a bunch of questions from you guys out there, and I want you to keep sending them to me, okay? Send your comments, send your questions. You should have a lot of questions about these bees because they're coming to your neighborhood. All right, so our first one is from Dan M. And he asks, can bees break brickwork to make a hive bigger? 
No, Dan, they can't. They can't. Bees have mandibles and a proboscis, but the man their mandibles are only for chewing wax and manipulating pollen. They, are, they can't chew through things. They can't chew through wood, etc. They take advantage of an existing space. All right, so they can move pebbles and rocks out of the way, small rocks out of the way. You get 50,000 of anything and they can move it out of the way. So they can move things around, but they do not, they cannot break things up and tear things apart. So they're not destructive that way. All right, our next question comes from the Glock family. All right, the biggest hive you ever encountered, bee-wise, Oh my goodness, the Glock family. We've had some really huge ones, all right? An entire wall completely full of comb and bees. Now, an average hive has 50,000 bees in it, which I think is overkill. You get two or three bees chasing you around, that's enough. I've seen a half a million bees. I've seen, if you go and look at our super swarm storm, who knows how many bees were in there? 750,000, 800? We don't know, it was such a huge swarm. So we've had a few big ones, like really, really big ones, all right? Their next question is, uh, how about the biggest as far as pounds of honey? And it isn't the same, actually. The size of the hive, we never know what we're going to get into. It's like a treasure hunt. Sometimes there's no honey at all. Sometimes it's completely full. A lot of it depends on the time of year, all right? Uh, as far as honey goes, I think our biggest uh, take was uh, seven or 800 pounds in one removal. It was exhausting. A normal, in a normal hive, we'll get 30 or 40 pounds, but then again, that's not every time. A lot of times there's nothing in there and there's no rhyme or reason to it. All right, let's move on. Pat Bubba, all right. What was the most dangerous and not due to bees removal you've had? Oh boy, you've seen a few of them, Pat. Um, oh boy, oh boy. The boom bees, very dangerous. That slab of concrete, that could have broke down and come down on us. Uh, you've seen a lot of the vids where we're 100 feet up, all right, on a cherry picker, and you can't run. You're stuck with those bees up there. Um, I've been uh, lowered down into a space that wide, literally, eight feet down, tied off with ropes so that I could access where the entrance was. Yeah, that was claustrophobic and a real pain in the butt. That even got me going. And it's hard to get me going. I ain't scared of much, all right? And then when I was done, I had to have the boys pull me up with the ropes out of that space. It gets hairy. Yeah, you watch the vids on YouTube and now Roku, it's, it gets hairy. So um, the scariest ones are pretty much up there, uh, but there have been some really life and death situations. Of course, every time we get on the bee suit, it's life and death. All right, let's move on here. Uh, the Glock family also wants to know, how many pairs of gloves and suits do you go through in a year? Okay, back in the day, a suit used to last me way too long. Now we gauge it, I don't use duct tape on my holes anymore. We get new suits, all right? We try to get a new suit every year, and gloves. As you've seen from the YouTube vids, they get pretty nasty pretty quickly, all right? So uh, a suit a year is about where we're at, and um, if it's a really busy, busy bad year, a couple of suits a year and gloves. All right, what do we got here? Pat Bubba again. Uh, do you suit up as you near the property in question after meeting with the owner or have you ever had to suit up in a near emergency situation because of having stumbled into the bee's path? Oh hell yes, absolutely. Uh, we've gotten out of the truck and been looking for the hive and all of a sudden gotten attacked. Well, get back in the truck real quick, all right? Um, if, if the bees have already killed a horse or a dog or someone, we will suit up before we get there. Sometimes a quarter of a mile away, sometimes further. It depends on the situation, but we safety is our first issue. This is I tell everyone, this is a job that I fail at once, because that means I'm dead. So we cannot fail at these jobs. Uh, what do we have here? We have Alicia. Okay, Alicia. Do we, do we apply layers of clothing under the bee suit? This is a great question, great question. Or does the suit with the regular clothing keep it uh, from getting you stung? No. The old suits, the normal suits that we used to have, they were either ripstop nylon or canvas. And if, this, uh, if they got stuck to our skin from sweat or honey or just being tight, they could sting right through them. All right? And we call those dammit stings because you get a very small amount of venom. It pokes you, you feel it, you move automatically, and it just makes me mad. 
So now, though, we have new suits that are thicker and can breathe. As far as wearing clothing underneath, we normally wear our normal work clothes. If we think it's going to be a bad one, we'll put a sweatshirt under, but then we have heat to deal with. Now, heat is a major issue in bee suits. I've had heat stroke too many times, and uh, I can't do it anymore. So it's a horse apiece. Now, with these new suits, though, it's problem solved. They breathe, and they can't sting through them. They're just thick enough, so it kind of took care of that issue. Okay, we got a couple more questions here. Uh, Pat asks, why do you drive with bees in the truck? Well, primarily to not get pulled over. I mean, that would be the logical thing, wouldn't it? I'm just kidding, Pat, for God's sake. Sometimes you just can't get them all off of your suit. You got 50,000 of them. You can't contain them. You can't corral them, all right? And we get in, and they're on our suits. They're everywhere. They are so mad. And so we'll just get in the truck with the suits on and drive a mile or two or more away before we can get out, brush each other off, and remove our suits. So it's kind of not on purpose, all right, Pat? <laughs> not on purpose. All right. Uh, who handles the repairs? This is an excellent question. The repairs are the responsibility of the homeowner or whoever has the property. And that we make that very clear. I'm not a contractor, all right? I'm licensed as, uh, as a bee removal expert. And so that's what we do. So it, it, um, we don't do the repairs. Uh, okay, this is a great question. When it comes to bee removal, who is responsible for the public if people are near? In the state of Arizona, uh, under the ARS, the Arizona Revised Statute, the homeowner is responsible for not only having the feral hive removed, but for anything that happens during the removal. So that's a great question, great question. Uh, Chris O wants to know, what's the best way to get into pest control? That's a really good question. It's kind of a tight-knit community, all right? I recommend going to your, your local pest control guys and asking them that question, all right? You're gonna have to get licensed with the state that you're in, period. That's just all there is to it. Don't be afraid of it. Do the studies. Take a class if you can. Take the test. It's worth it, all right? This is an exciting business, and it's a lot of fun, especially in the angle that we do at. So check with your local uh, pest guys. Make friends with them and see what they say. Arnie, Arnie B says, what level of knowledge do you need of construction or destruction? Ah, very good, Arnie. Uh, techniques to perform your hybrid. A lot of destruction, a lot of skills, a lot of skills. Yeah, you've seen us. Uh, pry bars, hammers, sawzalls, a lot of skills, Arnie. Uh, yeah, we don't put it back together. <laughs> We're good at tearing things apart, though. And what uh, things should people look for in order to bee-proof their homes? Excellent question. People ask me this all the time. How do I bee-proof my home? And I tell them, get out the ladder and the caulk gun. All right? Caulk up the holes. All we can do is make it unattractive. Seal up the holes. Any hole the size of a pencil, a quarter of an inch, if one bee can get in there, a whole hive can live in there if there's space behind it. All right, so get out the ladder with the caulk gun, seal up holes around your sheds. Uh, but they, that's not to say they aren't going to light right on the bumper of your car. We've removed bees from bumpers of cars that were used daily. So all we're trying to do is make it unattractive for them. Okay, and we have uh, Game Master 24S. What's the difference between bees and wasps? Excellent, excellent. It's literally, uh, they're like apples and oranges, all right? They're both fruit, but they're two completely different animals. Same thing with bees and wasps. For one thing, very interesting little factoid. Uh, about 5 or 6% of the human population is allergic to honey bee venom. About 65 to 70% is aller allergic to wasp and hornet venom. Okay, so the venom is completely different. Also, numbers. A wasp nest, if you have uh, oh, 500 wasps in a nest, that's a lot, all right? An average beehive has 50,000 of them. So, on average, Especially Africanized bees are one heck of a lot more dangerous than a wasp nest, all right? If you are not allergic to wasp venom, you can probably take care of a nest at home. If you got honeybees, do not even try it. You can't outrun them. You cannot, don't jump, you cannot get away from these dang things, all right? All right, what do we have next here? Uh, Paul D says, hi from the UK. All right. How you doing, Paul? And he wants to know, do you deal with wasps and hornets or only bees? We also deal with wasps and hornets, all right? Uh, but we don't deal with any other insects. Uh, we're licensed to, in the state of Arizona, we can deal with scorpions and ants and all that kind of thing, but we don't, 
we focus on bees, um, it's just, uh, it kind of segued into that in my life, and we'll go into that in a little bit, but we just deal with honeybees and wasp and hornets, but not very often on the wasp and hornet thing. All right, we got uh, Paul Dickinson, Paul Dick, Paul D from uh, the UK again. What happens to all the removed uh, comb and the brood comb and the nectar and honey? Excellent question. All right, you've seen us cutting comb out in the field. All right, you've got your brood comb or empty comb. You've got the section where the pollen is, and then you've got the honeycomb. Well, we try to separate that out right in the field and put it into our plastic buckets so when we get back to our commercial kitchen on the ranch, we can separate everything out and put it into bottles or comb boxes and get it ready for sale. So we separate out everything out very carefully and make sure that you know everything is super clean. Well, of course, a beehive is the most fastidious thing there is. Uh, bacteria can't even live in honey. All right, so that's what we do, and we try to do a lot of it in the field so that uh, it's taken care of by the time we get back to the ranch. Uh, let's see, what have we got here? The Glock family also asks, how much of the honey that you sell comes from jobs or calls that you get? Almost all of it. We have, we get so much. This is an interesting question, I love this. In a normal year, we will get between one and two ton of honey. Two years ago, we had a record of over three ton of honey. So it is truly treasure hunting, absolutely. What do we got here? Brandon L. All right, he asks, on average, how many hive removal calls do you get per week? Better. In a normal summer, just in this county, uh, Brandon, I'll get 14, I'll get, um, oh, 15 to 20 calls a day. All right. Now, not all of them are bee removals. Some of them are, there's bees on my hummingbird feeder. Well, wait till it gets dark and take the thing down, all right? Or there's bees around my screen door. Well, leave it closed. I mean, you know, some of that simple stuff, all right? A lot of education, a lot of education. Actual removals in a busy year, uh, two to six a day, something like that. But it is seasonal, very, very seasonal. And it is Mother Nature. We never know what's going to happen the next day. What have we got here? Uh, which time of year is the busiest from Brandon? Um, it's going to be starting here in a little bit. We're at the uh, end of February. It's not happening right now. It was 12 degrees Fahrenheit this morning at the ranch, so there's no bees flying around right now. It's normally from about the middle of March through April and into May, super busy time, all right, swarming. All right, nature's way of propagating the area with bees again. Wildflowers are out, bees are happy collecting nectar. Then for the rest of the summer through usually Halloween down here, it tapers off to a dull roar. But again, we don't. We never know what the next day is going to bring. Let's see. Matthew S. wants to know, again, on average, how much honey do you get in a year? Well, we covered that in a normal one to two ton of honey a year. Um, but some years, it gets a lot sparser than that. So uh, you never know. It's Mother Nature. You never know what's going to happen. Both Matthew S. and Linda M. want to know, how long have I been doing this? Oh, my goodness, forever. It seemed 30 years. I started keeping bees in 1988, all right, so uh, a long time, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, how did you get started on bee removal? Okay, Graham W. and Pat B. asked, uh, how did I get started on bee removal? This is kind of fun. I'm a home brewer, you guys might have guessed that, and I make mead or honey wine. And so many years ago, I thought it'd be all romantic to have my own bees and get my own honey and make my own mead and never leave the house. And then in 93, the Africanized bees moved in. And I was one of the, I was the only one crazy enough to go rescue the fire department from these things. So it's uh, kind of segued into that and it's just been continuing on ever since. So great question, excellent question. Graham also wants to know, how much do you get paid? A lot. Uh, Linda M. wants to know, uh, you're a great team, and you seem to have a good time together. How long have you guys been together? Trez has been foaming with me for six years now. And you can see from all the bids, we have over 260 bids up now, all right? And so, yeah, it, it's not everyone that can stick with this and do this. It, it takes a lot of cojones, uh, and you gotta be fearless. But it is a lot of fun, and it is addictive, once you get that adrenaline going. So, uh, as you all know, we lost one of our closest uh, companions, Big Frank, this last fall. Broke our hearts, and uh, so rest in peace, Frank. We love you. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Check us out on Roku. And, of course, oh, you want to try some honey, you say? Well, I know just the place you can go. 
KillerBeeGuy.com. That's right. You can see all of our flavors, all the honey butters, honey mustards, etc., and our honeys. Go buy some honey, you guys. KillerBeeGuy.com. I can honestly say, I risked my life to bring this honey to you. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks. But we're going to change the attitude about our beliefs. We're going to do videos that we're going to be doing. The question is, I took this off too soon. Holy crap! Holy cow! Holy crap! Oh my God. Like tucking it up? Yeah, like tucking it in. Let's keep doing this. Would you send me some more of these questions, please, you guys, and some comments? And enjoy the vids, please. Uh, they're, they're out there for your educational and entertainment, of course. So uh, we'll see you next time here at our Q&A.